This is Black Views, bringing you the black news. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, my, day to, my, uh, my topic today is going to be about uh, the devaluation of black men, um, why black men are seen the way that they are seen. All right, so many of our women find that black men today are bitchy or, or they're bitching. Um, and I, I think this comes from the mere fact that uh, men are tired or are afraid to be categorized as toxic males. So they're using more of their vocabulary, okay, to emphasize the things they need to emphasize. We no longer live in the time where men, black men in particular, can come off intimidating. I mean, it's easy for us to do that, but we have to watch the words that we use and how we say them because we live in a society that, that's trying to eliminate black men and make excuses as to say that we have toxic masculinity. Many of us have grew up, especially us that grew up with, with fathers, you know, we were taught, you know, boy, you better not stop crying. Stop that crying and shit before I punch in your chest and shit. Uh, many of us grew up in communities where um, it could be two guys arg arguing or it could be a guy saying something about another guy and he basically don't have the words to say back and he just haul off and hit him in his mouth, okay? That's the society that many of us came from, um, that, that abusive uh, uh, backgrounds. Uh, which came through slavery, yes. Abuse came through slavery. That, that's the only way we found uh, a, a way to control the situation uh, or make things go our way is through was through physical violence. So a lot of us grew up that way, okay? And so we're now in a society that's saying, you know, anything that's masculine is toxic masculinity. Um, anything that basically uh, shows that you are for um, heterosexual heterosexuality, or you you show the the lustful nature of a masculine man. You know all these things are seen as negatives, and a black men have have just naturally masculine. Okay, um, black men uh, the way we are built, the way the way we are we tower, just the way we look, the way our bodies are are you know created you know sculptured you know black men represent masculinity so we are now in a society where uh black men own nothing of significance and what i mean by that is we own nothing that can help other black men we, we, have no, we own no centers we don't own any institutions that assist with cultivating the uh the upbringing or development of black men so we media mass media has decided what black men are going to be who they are and how we will be seen um one arm of ammunition they use is hollywood so remember there was a time where um all the the artists and actresses and actresses actresses and actors were all white okay and so at one time, it was just white people, black people. You know, it was it were, there were some foreigners here. In fact, you know, all white people are foreigners. But what I'm trying to say is, there was a time where it was just it was more like master slave thing. You know, uh, you know they're free now. We must find a way to exploit them. Oh, they have an economy base. Is that right? So now Hollywood will now pitch in and decide uh, what type of movies will be seen, uh, what type of roles that black people will play. And many of us play negative roles. What I mean by negative roles, like slaves, we play, we play, uh, you know, uh, butlers and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Al Robeson, you know, you know, you know, singing and music, musical slave songs, things like that. Then came along, uh, I guess, uh, black exploitation because black people were like, man, we tired of these roles. We want to be in a role that's viable. You know, you know, we want to be the main characters. So they started creating. Uh, movie like pimp movies, criminal movies, it, it's a shaft, you know, like these type of movies uh, were based on urban crime, and then there was like some type of hero that would come out of that, right? 
Okay, so they were like black exploitation movies. But they, were, but remember, Hollywood will only allow us to make certain type of movies and be in certain type of movies. So then we became, then we became fans of criminals because the black, the actors, all the actors you saw in the movies were criminals. Like you know, yeah, that's bad, man. You know, everybody wanted to be a pimp. Remember, you know, during these times with the movies were, were also times where where jobs were scarce. They were closing down. Uh, uh, factories and warehouses and so forth black people were losing jobs and then the movies were coming up more and more about how to be a pimp how to sell the heroin how to sell the crap i mean the cocaine during the time some of the 70s you know how to you know uh yeah pimp these hoes and pimp these bitches that came out of hollywood i'm not trying to say that they were pimps and hoes because they were pimps and hoes but these were used as me mechanisms for survival you know what i'm saying and, and when i say that um you know hoes many people with what didn't want to be known as a hoe many people didn't want to be known as a pimp then it started hitting the movie screen and then they start showing it to black people as something that's cool you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is what you want to be, boy. You know what I'm saying? Money, hoes, and clothes. That's all a nigga knows. And, and those are the basic principles. Money, hoes, and clothes. With money, hoes, and clothes, those three things are like elements of like just niggertry. Just, I mean, when I say niggertry, just, just fuckery. Nothing. Nothing comes of it. It's just criminality. Okay? Stunting to show off. So when black people saw these movies, they started looking at the pimps, looking at the jewelry they're wearing, the cars they were driving, the women that came with it. So we started being fans of criminals. So here comes the devaluation because now um, everyone around the world just sees black people as pimps, uh, domestic viol uh, violence uh, users, uh, 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 drug users. Look at the movies they're looking at overseas. They're just the movies, all the violent movies. So when they get here, they stay away from you, and and you they're being brainwashed all over the world. That black people in America, who are the true people of America, by the way, the indigenous people of America are black people, the copper tone. So this is all put around the world. These movies, in particular. Which may have been entertaining to us, like I said, because we didn't see any other parts of us. And the only male, uh, only male, black male aggression that you saw was black male violence in movies. Like Colors, Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society. See, these, these, these movies expressed the black male's anger, the black male's frustration. Because many of those movies depicted a part in time after, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, Factories and things like that, like Compton, once used to be beautiful suburban areas, are now crime riddled neighborhoods. Once they tied the hands of the black man, okay, here come the the, 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 the crack and the cocaine. You know, I can only go that far back because that's that's my point in time. I'm sure it was heroin before that and something else before that. So my time, you know, the, the crack cocaine, when that came out, that was used as a tool by black men to flex success, a false reality. But money, money is power and money is success in America. Okay, you got to remember moonshine, all that prohibition, all that shit came. The white people use these vices and ways to maintain a financial superiority. And the clan in particular, they, they they hustle that moonshine. They hustle whatever they, they, they could hustle. Robbing banks, you know what I'm saying? Robbing uh, trains on the tracks. They did whatever to keep their little, their little cult of violence going. So black men, quite naturally, found crack cocaine as a way of financial gain. Now, it's not right. Of course, it's wrong. But I'm just telling you the facts. They look at the movies. They see what the cars look like. The money, holes, and the clothes. So, guess what? They sold the drugs. They did all these things for the money, holes, and clothes. Meanwhile, we're being devalued. Now, we're at a state where the drugs aren't out there as prevalent because everything's tied to everything. So, now we're scamming now. Do you see what I'm saying? Which opens the door for the next 
uh, portion or the next step of mass incarceration of black people, PPP loans, scans, and so forth. But back to why black men are undervalued because the world sees us as criminals. They don't know us because we all wear the same clothes now. Before there were music videos, every area had their own style. Black men wore trousers, black men wore hats, black men, you know, criminals wore suits. Now everybody's wearing the same attire. Everybody's looking like little Wayne. You can't tell a good child from a bad child because they're all wearing the same shit. And so, once again, this is the next phase of the devaluation. Have us all look alike so you can't tell, you know, who's good, who's bad till you open your mouth, right? And this is why I say to the young black man, it's so important that you develop a vocabulary. You know, because that pretty much sets the tone when you open your mouth and when you speak to people. Make an eye contact. You know, saying things, say, saying things that you mean. You know, having purpose in your in, in what you're saying. You know, um, think about what you're saying before you say it. And I didn't want to stay on this too long, but I just thought it was very important to understand why black men are being devalued and why our, our women see us as the way they see us. You see what I'm saying? Like they, they, they see, the, our, our women see us as non-achievers because we live in a system that has created that for us. Oh yes. They don't wanna see black men rise because we've been through too much, okay? And what the other side is afraid of is that we're gonna put them through what they put us through. And that's what all this fear is about. And that's why you have a buffer class to make room between us and them. And then while they elevate the buffer class, they'll keep moving us down. And that's why you have LGBTQ and all these other groups because that's to fade away our struggle. I'm gonna tell you right now, anybody out here worrying about animal rights, worrying about all rights for, for elephants and everything else before they do black people is a scam. And all it is, is, is uh, uh, um, prob probable deniability. Not wanting to see that what the real problem is and, and, and guilt for that. So we won't worry about the dogs. And I also consider that to be highly offensive. That we live in a world that's sensitive to everything else. But what is going wrong in this world. And particularly in America. The indigenous people of America are treated like the aborigines. And we are the aborigines. We are the aborigines of, of the North America. We are the aborigines. And this is why they try to fade us out, shine us out, because they know they owe us for this land that they have stolen from us. I'd be damned if it's a goddamn some 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 uh some somebody that looked like somebody that came over to burn straits and then you got five dollar Indians. See, this is what they try to do, so there'll be no payment mix up everything you know make it look like there's nobody that knows what's going on no we know what's going on and we know who we are and you know who we are because we're the people that's abused every day black men are the head of black families they have found a way to bound and gag the black man give you an example of of of, of bounding and gagging black men can't say nothing or do anything they will lose their jobs and their livelihood if whatever they got black women are allowed to run their mouth they're allowed to say all the ridiculous retarded things that they that, that their heart so desire say anything that doesn't make sense to aggravate their own look every other group have their own women and their women cater to them we are the only group who who actually says fuck black men fuck their own men we're the only group who are out there in social media right now talking about how they're going to abort black boy babies. This is disgusting. And so black men, we need to rise like every other group is rising. We need to rise for ourselves. Okay. But there's a lot of coonery going on. Because we do have black men in important positions that are worthless. They're just sitting there to be sitting there. Once again, I want you to like and subscribe. You know, also share. This is Black Views, bringing you the black news.